This is AQA A-Level Chemistry. It is a required practical question, practical skills, and it is on RPA1. This is question three. I'm going to recommend you pause, put down your answer on paper, and then review. Okay, so we're going to start with question A, and then moving on through B, C, and D. So let's start with A. Hopefully you've had a chance to go through it. We've got a reaction between a diprotic unknown acid, H2A, with NaOH. We've got lots of different masses, volumes, concentrations provided, and we've also got the tighter information that we can see in the table. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is work out the average titer. So let's take a look. We are going to find the mean. We are going to disregard the rough titer. We never include the rough titer, even if its value is concordant with your other values. But we're also going to disregard experiment number two. 26.75 is too high. It's not concordant with the other two. Whereas 26.40, 26.50 are within 0 0.10 cm cubed of each other. Therefore, they are concordant. That means I can work out an average with those two, taking me to a value of 26.45 cm cubed. We're then going to work out the number of moles of NaOH. And the moles of NaOH, I've got my concentration 0.112, and we used a 25 cm cubed sample of it. So I'm going up to the second bullet point here. From there, I can work out that we have got 2.8 by 10 to the minus 3 moles of NaOH. Once I know the moles of NaOH, I can work out how many moles of H2A that we're reacting with. My moles of acid in the reaction, well, I know it's related to 2.8 by 10 to the minus 3, but I'm working on the basis that this is a 1 to 2 mole ratio. So actually, I need to halve that value. And that takes me to the moles of acid, 1.4 by 10 to the minus 3. From there, I can work out how many moles there were in 250 centimetres cubed. I'm going to do that by multiplying, or sorry, dividing by 26.45 cm cubed and multiplied by 250. So this is taking me down to what there would be in one centimeter cubed, and that's taking me up to what there would be in 250. And I can see that I had 0.0132 moles in that initial sample. Now my MR is M divided by N. I've converted my milligrams into grams, 1.3. I am dividing by N, which is 0.0132 giving me an MR of 98.49. The answer was actually accepted anywhere between 98.2 and 98.5, but show you working so you can see how to get to that value. Okay, let's move on. We've got B, the uncertainty in using the pipette in this experiment is plus minus 0 0.06 centimeter cubed. Calculate the percentage uncertainty. Well, there were 25 centimeter cubed in the pipette, so I'm going to find out what 0 0.06 is as a percentage of 25. 0 0.06 over 25 multiplied by 100 takes me to 0.24%. Moving on to C. Before adding the solution from the burette in the rough titration, there was an air bubble below the tap. At the end of the titration, that bubble was no longer there. Why would the air bubble increase the final burette reading of the rough titration? Well, what we're looking for here is that the air bubble is taking up space where liquid should have been. So if we have that, as the air bubble goes, we're going to need to add even more volume from the burette until we get to the point where the reaction is finished. So it is going to give us a very different volume. And finally, during the titration, the student washed the inside of the conical flask with some distilled water. Suggest why this washing does not give an incorrect result. Well, you might look at it and think we are diluting it, but actually we are not changing the number of moles of alkali in that reacting vessel, in that conical flask. It will still require the same number of moles of acid to neutralize. So it does not change the number of moles of alkali. That takes us to the end of this question. 
Thank you for listening and goodbye.